Gate initiation and termination. Understanding how the center of pressure moves when we start and stop walking. Understanding how walking is not only to focus on steady gait, but also to all that is part of daily life. Man walks forward, backward, jumps, runs, goes up and down slopes and stairs, crosses obstacles, carries loads. And even before that, we must begin to walk. Once we arrive at a destination, we must be able to stop. We will focus here on two particular phases of the walk that are the gait initiation and termination to understand how the center of pressure and the center of mass normally operate in an asymptomatic subject and thus better understand the influence of the pathology. The term gait initiation defines the transition from the standing posture to walking in which a precise control of the center of pressure is required to accelerate the center of mass in the direction of advance. Specifically, it is the very short period between the first mechanical phenomena and the time when the support limb begins its swing phase. This task is so present in our daily life and integrated by the central nervous system that we do not pay attention, yet it is more complicated to achieve than steady speed gait. Indeed, from the perspective of motor control, it is an unsteady transitional period between two stable states, static posture and steady gait, in which postural synergy fades and locomotor synergy begins in place. Regarding the analysis, the initiation is generally divided into two phases, anticipatory postural adjustments phase or release phase and an execution phase or unloading phase. The separation between the two phases occurs when the starting limb enters in swing phase. This video shows the gate initiation. Let's go to the point now with the terminology used later to identify limbs. The starting limb will be the side initiating the movement. In our examples, it will be the right foot. This side may also be called swing limb because it will be the first side to get in the swing phase. Therefore, the contralateral limb will be the support limb, first side to be the single support phase. Let's first consider the anticipatory postural adjustments phase. In a static position, the center of pressure and the projection of the center of mass on the ground, often named center of gravity, are close. The center of pressure stabilizing the position of the center of mass by excursions of the greater amplitude and higher frequency. To initiate the walk, the movements of the center of pressure should induce a torque of imbalance between center of pressure and center of mass. This is the only way to create movement if you do not have someone available to push you in the back. In other words, the center of pressure should be moved backward to drop the center of mass forward. How do we do it? Due to the relaxation of the plantar flexor muscles, the soleus, and activation of the dorsiflexor muscles, the tibialis anterior, the toes are slightly raised and thus the base of support is reduced. The center of pressure then goes backwards and towards the starting foot, i.e. the first oscillating limb, due to the contraction of the ipsilateral hip abductors which induce acceleration of the center of mass forward to the support limb. After this drop of center of pressure to the starting foot, it continues its course in the rear to the support foot and anticipatory postural adjustments are terminated by lifting the swinging foot. Transfer to the support limb is visible here on this graph representing the medial lateral position of the center of pressure. You notice that the instant of heel off, represented here by a red point, often coincides with a slight offset of the center of pressure. The execution phase. This phase begins with a single support phase during which 
the swinging foot is moved forward. The center of pressure is moving forward under the support foot and the center of mass accelerates forward and medially until the starting foot comes again into contact with the ground. At this point, the trajectory of the center of mass adopts the behavior observed during walking with a sinusoidal motion. Finally, during the following double support, a contraction of the soleus, obviously associated with the effects of gravity, initiate the propulsion of the limb, which was the supporting leg, and then comes into swing phase. We enter now into the walk. We replay here the path of the center of pressure during the execution phase with the left single support followed by double support. In healthy subjects, steady speed of the center of mass is reached at the end of the first step, and it is inversely proportional to the duration of the gait initiation. It is also noted that the range of mediolateral displacement of the center of mass is always smaller than the center of pressure during gait initiation, so that the stability can be maintained. Let's talk about gait termination. The gait termination is a transitional period during which the body decelerates until a complete stop. It is characterized by a deceleration of the center of mass, a placement of the feet to establish the final base of support, and the control of the center of mass within the limits of this base of support to ensure stability. Muscle synergies used by the central nervous system lead leg motion to change the center of pressure under the feet. The center of pressure monitors the center of mass during ending of the walk and can influence its position. Here we focus on the last three stances, which we will name penultimate support, last support, and stabilizing support. Two different types of protocols may be used in the literature. In plan termination, Patients are informed about where they have to stop, and they must end with their feet parallel. In the unplanned condition, the subject has no prior knowledge about where they should stop, and the final position of the feet are not constrained. Gait termination is commonly described and analyzed in three phases, braking, transition, and stabilization. The braking phase corresponds to the movement of the center of pressure from the penultimate support to the last support until the penultimate support leaves the ground. The center of pressure therefore moves forwards and laterally on the side of the first leg which stops, i.e. the last support. This foot placement will enable the center of pressure to move ahead of the center of mass to decelerate it. A step length too short may also affect the termination by limiting the ability to break the center of mass to the desired location. The transition phase begins then, once all the pressure is transferred to the final support, the other limb is in swing phase. The center of pressure reaches its, its maximum forward position in the middle of single support. This phase reduces the speed of the center of mass moving towards the midline. The point at which the center of pressure changes its direction does not match with any particular event, but always comes after the forefoot contact of the last support and before the contact of the stabilizing support with the ground. Once double support is established, we are then in the stabilization phase. The center of pressure joins the center of mass by completing a short posterior and medial correction. You will notice that the pathway of the center of pressure during gait termination is relatively similar to the gait initiation, however inverted. Both gait initiation and gait termination require abilities of equilibrium, propulsion, and braking, which are perturbed in many pathologies and conditions. For example, in lower limb amputation, the lack of plantar dorsiflexor requires other strategies to start and stop walking. 
We will address in detail the influence of pathology on these two phases in a future presentation. In the meantime, you can expand your knowledge with these references.